you so much. Thank you so much. You may please take your seat and let's have your attention. Don't struggle for the program. It will eventually come to you. Or you can share with your neighbor. Let's have some quiet. Let's get some attention so that we give this general of God a befitting, respectful, final farewell, which we are already doing. Uh, with respect and honor to our fathers of faith who are seated here, still yet to be introduced, we want to, at this point, call up the testimonies and tributes from three persons. Uh, one person is bringing for the family, one for the church, and the other general is going to bring for, on behalf of the friends of our Papa, Dr. Obiara Ezekiel. So at this point, at this point, uh, let us invite Elder Ralph Mwogu, please, come and give a very short one, just one or two minutes, on behalf of the family. Please, Elder Ralph Mwogu, can we give him a very generous clap offering as he comes up? Elder Ralph, find your way to the stage. Microphone belongs to you right now, Elder Ralph. I remember what happened in 15, 1552. I don't know how many of you remember what happened in 1552. How many of you here remember what happened in 1552? Something happened. How many of you are students of history? Keep coming, Elder Ralph. In 1552, the book of 1 Corinthians, 1552, he says, In a moment, in a twinkle of an eye, the trumpet will be sounding. And those of us who are alive and remain will be caught up with our father, Dr. Obiora, in the skies. Come on, jubilate if you know what happened 1552 in 1 Corinthians. Come on, come on, come on. Celebrate Jesus. That's what the Bible says. Shout hallelujah. Reverend Dr. Obiora Raizika is my senior brother. He is my spiritual father. He is my mentor. He is an evangelist. A pastor, he's a teacher, he's a prophet. I love him and he loved me. His body is here, but the spirit is over there with the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. I will not waste more time. The Lord in heaven told him five years ago, son, get ready. You will come home. And he called me, Ralph. I said, Star. He said, The Lord told me his time. I said to him, I, your junior brother, I don't agree. Tell God, please, I don't agree. Your wife 
and your children still needs you. Your brothers and your sisters still need you. The body of Christ still needs you. Please tell God, I don't agree. Abraham interfered for Sodom and Gomorrah, but he, he stopped at I think, 5 or 10. I interceded to one person. I said, tell God, your junior brother don't agree. You go nowhere. God full of mercy and love. Pardon this prayer. Exactly these five years, Reverend Lewis, Elias called me and said, Daddy has gone to glory. With this I said, brethren, uh, we are mourning, but we are not mourning, but we are celebrating. Very, very soon, we will join him to the glory. I say, glory be to God for all he has done for us. Amen. And let's encourage Elder Rav for that very touching story that he has to tell us today. I believe every story today has got a blessing for someone that's here. And very quickly, the permission of our fathers of faith want to call to speak for the church. Elder O.K. Kassim, please, Elder O.K. Kassim, make your way to the platform and give your own testimony or tribute on behalf of the church, the CPM. Can we clap for this great elder? Thank you so much. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. I count it a great uh, privilege and honor to be called upon to testify of the wonderful and excellent, impeccably and incorruptible power that emitted from our daddy, Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel. As a young man, I, was, I found myself in the crossroad of life, trying to take decision. And I saw the face of God. The answer I got was two Bible verses. For years, I've been pondering, trying to understand the meaning of these two Bible verses. Until I came to do youth service in Lagos. And God directed me to worship in CPM. As I joined the body of Christ, under the leadership of our late father, God began to show me what it means to use his word as an incorruptible seed. All we need to become whatever we want to be is already in the word of God. And through Reverend Dr. O. Ezekiel, this truth this reality was made bare unto me. I began to understand the truth. I began to receive freedom. I believe many of you here have the same experience. And I'm here to testify that this is a man who dedicated his whole life for God, every personal ambition, and embraced the kingdom promotion to rebred souls which are one of them I want to thank God for using him to show us the truth he showed us the truth in word, in conversation in profession in character he was never found wanting at any point in time 
I remember when I started a business. And for several months, everything was like stagnant. I approached him, and he was laughing. His response was just laughter. Because he made me to understand that with joy, we can draw from the wells of salvation all the sevenfold blessings God has given to us. And that is why I'm able to stand before you this hour to say, join me to thank God for giving us such a great gift. We appreciate you, Daddy. We will not let you down. We continue to keep the light burning. We are not surprised that you are called home. We rejoice with the host of heaven and give all glory to God for what he has done. Thank you. May God bless you. Please uh, encourage uh, Elder OK for very, very revealing testimony about our father. At this moment, I'm about to call the third person, and I don't even know if I'm qualified to call the friend of this great general. In my village some years ago, when I was a small boy, there's a masquerade called Ekbo Masquerade in Akwaibom State. And as a small child, we used to carry that masquerade. We thought we were Ekbo Masquerade. Till one day across the road, we saw the big masquerade. We removed our own and ran away. So which means Ekbo saw Ekbo and ran. So in this place today are small masquerades who are walking like MCs and the big masquerades. So ladies and gentlemen, help me bring up one of the biggest masquerades of the Pentecostalism in Nigeria. Ladies and gentlemen, help me if you wouldn't mind, rise on your feet. Welcome my father in the Lord, the foremost evangelist in Africa, the man whose crusade in Lagos began the PFN as a fellowship. Please help me welcome the legendary, the iconic, Reverend Dr. Umar Kupai of the Umar Kupai Evangelistic Association. Make some noise as he comes to speak. I stopped coming to Lagos 10 years ago because I don't like their soup. But here I am. Something compelled me. Something forced me to come. Let's give a clap of friend to this awesomely awesome God. As I was coming up, the band tried to play a song. They almost killed that song. So they would repeat it. Uh, whoever has the best guitar, the lead guitar. No, 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 no. You're not. What is the play? Can somebody shout hallelujah? Remember, brethren, I'm excited to see the goodness of our God. He is amazingly wonderful. Can we give a good clap offering to this awesomely awesome God who is our Father? Men and brethren, he that keepeth Israel, who neither slumbers nor sleeps. Let's give him one more clap offering, everybody.
Uh, Dr. Zeke, Dr. Zeke was more than a brother, more than a friend. We traveled all over the world together. He and the young man over there, Bishop Wanchuku, is the young man. Three of us. <laughs> Men and brethren, we went from Hong Kong to America, from America to China, and became great partners in the gospel. Ezekiel was a humble, teachable man. His success did not in a way make him proud or arrogant. There are few men who can, become, who can remain humble despite their success. He was just a humble. The funny thing was, he, he, he compelled me without saying anything to fight for him. When we travel across the world and people molest him, I will volunteer to fight for him. And this man will allow me to fight for him. One more time, let's give God a good clap of faith. I don't know whether you know what it means to have a friend. When you have a friend, he will keep you busy, too busy to hear what your enemies are saying. And if you're here this day, okay. Which country do you come from? If you have no friend you can trust, if you have no friend that God can use to multiply you and increase you and bless you, ask God for one. When God gives you a friend, he'll become a substitute father and a substitute brother. Men and brethren, this man was just too generous to be a Nigerian. <laughs> in, in Hong Kong, 1985, he emptied his pocket to me. I said, you decrease. We are now in a strange land. Whatever money you have, keep it. He said, no, I want to share it with you. <laughs> it's difficult to thank this about God enough. I come from a family where I was made the first son accidentally. So I had no senior brother. And I had no good friend I could work with. But God raised the two of them for me. If you're here today and you don't know this Jesus personally and intimately and spiritually and empirically and livingly, don't leave this place without knowing him. He will give you a friend who will become the brother you never had, who will become a father you never had, and who will, when I lost two children and two cousins in one day. When I lost eight printing machines the same day, when I lost three jeeps the same day, I was shocked. They were all there in New York to wipe away my tears and stand by me at my hour of need. Um, I have been to heaven twice. I'm the only man here who has been to heaven twice. Some of you have never been there. And I pity you. When you go to heaven as I have gone, everyone that dies will stir up your jealousy. Because heaven is indescribable. 
I have to go beyond the boundaries of human language to tell you what heaven looks like. That, that Ezekiel has passed on. I will not cry. I did not cry. Rather, I became jealous. I, I know God has asked me to stop saying I do. <laughs> Come on, let's give this God a one more, one more clap of praise. I, I, I like the Nigerian gra- I like the Nigerian grammar that says somebody is too much. Men and brethren, our God is too much. No, no, no. Somebody hold somebody's hand and say, Our God is too much. Did I hear you? <laughs> I want to thank all of you for honoring my friend and brother. You have honored the God that called us to serve it. And everyone that has found time and reason to be here, you are going to, today will be your day of new beginning. And this God that preached will bless you with surplus supplies. While others borrow, you will let, you will give out. While others beg, you will bless others. Um, I don't know. I am also very proud that our fathers of faith are here despite that tight shadow. Can we please give them a good clap of praise? <laughs> no, wait, 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 wait. That's why I don't like Lagos. I wish you were in New York. You'll clap better. Can you clap very, very well for them? For the wife and the children who are mourning, I want you to hear me. There is no better place than heaven. So, when we cry, let us not please offend God. He knows what is good for us. He knows the place that will bring out the best in us. The heaven he prepared for us is amazingly wonderful. If you're a believer, you already owe God a good clap of praise and celebration. May this God richly and lavishly bless you forever and works ever. Thank you. Please celebrate our Father in the Lord as we hand over this microphone to Dr. Bakare to introduce our fathers. Dr. Bakare. Please put your hands together. Let's celebrate our own father. I have a very quick job I need to do. I want to appeal to you if you want to be honored tomorrow to honor these fathers very quickly as we do this. Um, we're a little bit running short of time and we need to move a little bit faster now. Please join me to welcome the Pentecost, the president of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, our own father, the right reverend, Dr. Francis Wale Oke. Please welcome the president of the PFF and Mama Oke. Please welcome Papa and Mama. Please welcome the Archbishop John. Please welcome the Archbishop. Um, The Archbishop John Prince, the Deputy President of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. The Deputy President will welcome you in Jesus' name. I'd like to welcome our immediate past president, uh, the Reverend Dr. and Mama Omobude, Felix Omobude. Daddy and Mommy will welcome you. We will welcome um, some members of NAC, the Reverend Dr. Paul Nwachuku will welcome you, sir. We welcome um, Reverend Okorafo. We welcome the Archbishop John Osauni Nak and and National Vice President for Southwest. We welcome our Father, the Archbishop and Bishop Mrs. Mike Okonko. Please welcome our Father. Please, please forgive me for the order just trying to 
do the best with the short of time. We welcome all the way from Kano Bishop Ransom Bello. We welcome the Archbishop and Reverend Mrs. Ojo. And just coming in now, we also welcome our Father Bishop Dr. David Oyedekbo of the Winners Chapel. Continue. We welcome, we welcome Reverend Aboyeji, the um, General Overseer of Foursquare and the Treasurer of PFN. We welcome my boss, the National Secretary of the PFN, the Reverend Dr. Cosmos Ilechuku. We welcome um, Apostle Professor Alexander Bangbola from Lagos State. We welcome the Chief of Staff, Bishop Akin Akin Soya. We welcome the Reverend Dr. Vitor Okore. We welcome Apostle Otaro all the way from Abekuta. And we welcome Apostle, uh, uh, Apostle D. E. 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 Yinama. Okay, forgive me. We welcome the Reverend Toyin Adeyemo. We welcome the, we we'll just welcome our Father Omar Pai. We welcome um, Bishop S.T.N. Adegbite from Khan Lagos State. We welcome Bishop O.C. Dominic. We welcome the very Reverend Father Matthew Ayo. Ogun Shari. We welcome Reverend Dr. Dixon Asaju. We welcome the Reverend Dr. and Mrs. Akintoye Braimo. We welcome Evangelist Mrs. Yabo Zanu. Senior Apostle Julius Opa. Shola, Reverend Doctor and Reverend Mrs. Uh, we welcome the right Reverend Doctor Pius Odioko. We welcome um, the Chairman of PFN Delta. We welcome the Presiding Bishop. Uh, who is the, we also welcome all Presiding Bishops. We welcome all State Chairmen of the PFN. We welcome all the leaders and the fathers that are here. And in my place, it is said that the biggest masquerade come last. I welcome, with due respect and honor, our own very father and mommy, Daddy Gio Adeboye. Daddy Gio, please welcome Daddy and mommy. We we'll welcome you, sir. We're a little short of time, so we will quickly move forward. We will put in more people as we go on. But please welcome uh, Dr. Bishop Imaison. Thank you so much, Dr. Bakare. Uh, we wanted to know that if we skip any program, we will still come back to that program. At this moment, uh, very specially, respect to whom respect is due, welcome the number two man in the Federal Republic of Nigeria, his Excellency, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Pastor Professor Yemi Osibanjo, GCFR. Please celebrate our own Osibanjo. Welcome, sir. Welcome, sir. The Vice President is, the Vice President is giving respect to time so he may not speak to us at this moment. He's giving respect to time so that the word can come forth very quickly. And to bring forth the word of God to us today, I am not qualified to introduce the guest speaker. I'm still not qualified to introduce even the man who will introduce the man who will introduce him. But in all the humility, I would like to recalls to the immediate past president of the PFN to come and do the introduction of this bigger, bigger masquerade. So help me welcome our father, Reverend Dr. Felix Omobude of the New Covenant Gospel Church, Phoenix City, Nigeria, the man who witnessed the moving of the PFN from the CPN up to our National Secretariat. Please help me welcome a father. Protocol, help him. Help him show him the way to this pulpit to do the right thing. Can you celebrate a father of Pentecostals, our own Dr. Felix Omobude? Welcome, sir.
Everybody praise the Lord. Praise the name of Jesus. And this is a very special moment. And we give glory to God for the gift of life that he has given to us. In honor to God and to his world, let everyone prepare his or her heart in an occasion like this. God definitely has a world for everyone to bring the message from heaven. It's God's own messenger, a man we deeply love and respect, does not need any introduction. May I ask everyone to stand, please, wherever you are, on your feet, in honor to God and to his word. And let's receive our Father, the general overseer of the redeemed Christian Church of God, Pastor E. A. Adeboye. Go ahead, celebrate the King of Kings. Somebody shout hallelujah. You are the Alpha and Omega. and the ending, the only one who can say, I am, the one who has no beginning and has no ending, we worship you. We thank you very, very, very much for this great general of yours that has come home to rest now. 
Father, accept our thanks in Jesus' name. We commit the family he has left behind into your hands, both the biological family and the spiritual family. Father, you are the great comforter. You are the one who promised that you will never leave us, you will never forsake us. Please be with these families, Lord. Take care of them. And we pray that on the last day we will all be there on the resurrection morning, even with our brother who is resting now, to rejoice and to praise you forever. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Well, let someone shout hallelujah. Well, wave to one or two people and say, good afternoon, God bless you. Oh, is it morning? <laughs> and then uh, you may please be seated. I was ordained a pastor in 1975, and this is the third time since 1975 that I'm preaching at a funeral, third time. I think that should summarize my feeling, my respect for our brother who has gone to rest. I met him a little more than 40 years ago. I had just become the general overseer of the Redeemed Christian Church of God. And I was living in a room in Moshi. And he sought me out. I've never met him before, but he came to Mushi, located my one-room apartment, and paid me a visit. I don't need to tell you what then was my reaction, but we became very, very close. I knew Brother Ezekiel. I knew the man who became known as the bulldozer. Some of you might not know the meaning of that name. That he was a terror to demons. He bulldozed them. I knew a man who, like the great masquerade. <laughs> By the way, I'm not a masquerade. I described to you as an extremely generous man. Was generous almost to a fault. I think throughout his lifetime, maybe I preached three times in his church. But I can't remember how many times I had visited him one on one at home. On my last visit, I arrived very early in the morning as usual because if you live at Redemption Camp and you really want to save your time, you must leave before others wake up. Arrived in his place by 6.30 a.m. and we were together for us some time. But that day I knew he was going. How did I know? 
We went into his bedroom as usual. We held hands. My friend, good morning. Say good morning, sir. How are you today? No answer. Um, is there anything special you want me to pray about today? No answer. Uh, are you upset with me that it's been a couple of months since I visited you last? No answer. For the rest of the period I spent with him, <laughs> and the wife is my witness, my friend didn't say a word. His face was fixed. Suddenly I realized this is somebody who has seen the unseen. Someone who is hearing the inaudible. He had my hand. As if to say, can you see what I'm seeing? Are you hearing what I'm hearing? After some time, I had to pray. And reluctantly, he let go of my hands. A few days later, I heard he was gone. I'm happy that all the people who have been speaking before me have been saying, don't mourn Dr. Ezekiel. If you want to cry, cry for yourself. Don't cry for someone who has gone to heaven. If there's anybody who should be crying now, it should be you crying for yourself that you are the one still left in the battle front. My friend has made it. Oh, glory be to God. I was going to talk a little bit about heaven, but <laughs> the biggest masquerade <laughs> has already spoken about that. It's been there twice. I've only seen heaven once. So the one who's been there twice, of course, can tell you more. Someone once asked me, sir, can you tell us what heaven is like? Forgive me if I'm, if I'm not preaching to you this morning. This, this is not the kind of situation where I, I want to preach. I just want to, want to talk to you from the bottom of my heart. I want you to wake up. Those of you who are still toying with heaven. Those of you think you can do whatever you like here and make it to heaven. Someone said, can you tell me, can you tell us a little bit about heaven? See, it's difficult to describe. We don't have the words. But I said, I give you a very, very poor illustration. And I told the story of what happened 1979, I went to America for the first time to attend Kenneth Hagin camp meeting. It was in July, summertime. And uh, Tulsa that year was declared the number three cleanest city in America. They wash the street every day, not sweep, wash. So clean that if your foot fell on the ground, you can pick it up and eat it. We stayed in an hotel where the faucet, the, the, the bathroom had three faucets, one for hot water, one for regular water, 
one for ice water. The light didn't blink once. Remember, I was living in motion. And by night time, the sun was still shining bright. I was there for two weeks. Then the time came to come back home. Go to Ikeja. And they said, fasten your seatbelt. And I looked out of the window. Some machine. I said, oh God, back to prison. It's a very poor comparison. Beloved, if you catch a glimpse of heaven, the only reason you won't commit suicide is because if you kill yourself, you won't get there. Don't weep for somebody who has gone to heaven. Weep for yourself. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 27. Hebrews 9, 27 says, It is appointed unto man once to die. But after that, judgment. Death is not the issue. Everybody is going to die. If the Lord tarries, children will die. Old ones will die. Friend, Dr. Maupai, told you about how he lost children, lost his wife, and he wanted. Be still here, long after the children are gone. I lost my own son last year. I know what it is for the son to die while the father is here. Old ones will die, kings will die. Kings make us, we die. Samuel died. Death has no respect for anointing. Elisha died. There was enough anointing left in his bones to raise the dead. But it is appointed unto man who wants to die. You are going. If the Lord tells the big question is, after that, the judgment. Oh, forgive me. I was so carried away to hear what is in my heart. I, I forgot to say thank you very much to the elders of CPM. I've had good reports concerning you. God bless you. Thank you for standing with the widow, your father and the Lord. They say it in Africa, in Yoruba land. The one who is your friend when you are alive is not the big one. It's the one who is your friend after you are gone. Thank you, elders. May you also end well. And let me sound a warning to anyone who I want to say they want to take undue advantage of the fact that my friend is gone. It is appointed unto man wants to die. After that, judgment. Oh, the Bible made it clear. If you have ever read the Bible at all, we will all stand before the judgment seat of Christ, as those of us who are born again. Those who are not born again, <laughs> you will stand before the white throne and study your Bible. If you ever find yourself before the white throne, you know you are not there because God wants to check whether you are good or bad. It's to determine how hot your place will be in hell. 
If you stand before the judgment seat of Christ, at glory be to God, it means you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you'll be there to receive reward. I will talk to those who stand before the white throne in a moment. Let me talk to those of us who claim that we are children of God, who are already born again. Genuinely, I believe. We are going to stand before the judgment seat of Christ. Let me give you an assurance. Every one of us, pastors, the elders, member of the choir, ushers, etc., etc. When we get to heaven, we're going to cry. Oh, sir, you miss it. There are no tears in heaven, really. Is it not written that God will wipe away all tears from our eyes? Over there. Where are you going to cry? Because when it is time to check your record, First Corinthians chapter 3, from verse 13 to 15, it says, all your work will be brought forth, and it will be tried by fire. Everything you do will be tried by fire. If what you do is acceptable to God, fire won't consume it. Anything you, you do on earth here yeah, with the wrong motive, fire will consume it. The Bible says if your work is burnt, Hey, because you are born again, you are already in heaven, no problem. But the Bible says it will be as if you are passing through fire. When you see the good you could have done that you didn't do, and when you see the evil you did for personal purposes, when you see the fire dealing with whatever you did, because God is not going to judge only by what you did, but by the motive behind it. They're going to cry. Watch what you do from now on. Because one day, <laughs> you'll be the one lying in the coffin. And someone else will be preaching. As for those of you who are still toying with salvation, we think this is all a joke. We know how to be big up with us, shout hallelujah like us, uh, sing like you know all our songs. There are musicians now who, <laughs> who take a little bit of drugs before they get on stage. But those of you who are not genuinely saved, you will stand before the white throne. And it will be heavily settled. It's not a question of how is it? Sir, have you been to hell? No, God forbid. But I ask God to give me an illustration. I, I don't want to I don't want to see it. Will you just give me an illustration of what hell is like? And he gave me three instead of one. But I will only share one with you because of time. There was fuel scarcity in Nigeria a particular year. It was very terrible here in Lagos. So the peer care boss, I think that's what they called it, they were using jerry can to buy fuel, and they would hang it on the bus. Moldway, I think that's the name of the vehicle there. And there was this boy who was going to school. Mama was also going to work. And the mama got down in a particular place, and the moldway continued to take the boy on the way to school. And there was this little bridge at Yaba. As the motor was descending the, the, the bridge, the driver lost control. The 
hold them, fell on his side, the only side where there was a door, and caught fire. The boy was crying, my mother, my mother, until he was born to death. God said to me, that's an example of hell. Those who go there, they will cry. There will be nobody to deliver them. They will burn there like that forever. Don't weep for Dr. Ezekiel. He's made it. Weep for yourself. You are still on the battlefront. Don't believe anybody who tells you that once you are born again, you can never backslide. You can't. There have been apostles who backslid. It's not everybody who is calling Jesus Christ Lord, Lord now that will make it to heaven. Wake up, brother. Wake up, sister. Today, as we are rejoicing because one general made it, Better tighten your belts and make up your mind that whatever is going to cost, you will make it also. I pray for you that you will. As for those of you who have not given your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to count from 1 to 10. Before I say 10, I want you to come and stand before this altar so we can pray for the salvation of your soul. Hell is not a joking matter. And if you do not give your life to Jesus Christ sincerely, that's where you'll be going. I finished my sermon. You want to give your life to Jesus Christ? Come now. I'm going to count from one to ten. I'm saying one now. Two. Oh, you may say, what will my friends say if they see me I'm in uniform, maybe uniform of a choir, uniform of an usher, and they see me coming forward to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. There's <laughs> no friend who can help you. If you are on your way to hell, you better come and surrender your life to Jesus Christ now. Three. Four. The choice is yours. God brought you here today to give you probably the last chance to miss hell. You come you have the chance to give your life to Jesus, or you can let it go. Six. And you might be the only one who will respond. If you like, do so. If you like, don't do so. Seven. God bless you, my brother. God bless you, my sister. The choice is yours. This day can be the turning point in your life. Eight. We're going to the final countdown. If you are coming, okay, I can see one fellow running there. Maybe I wait 10 seconds. Hurry up. Hurry up. Hurry up. Nine. Thank you, Jesus. If you are coming, just wave your hand so I know you are on the way. Glory be to God. All right. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming, I'll, I'll wait, i wait another 30 seconds. Come, come. Don't miss this opportunity. 
One day you will stand either before the judgment seat of Christ to be rewarded or before the white throne so that we can be sent to an appropriately hot portion of hell. The choice is yours today. God bless you. God bless you. Keep coming. God bless you. 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 Nine. God bless you. Okay. Glory be to God. Keep coming. Keep coming. Keep coming. Praise God. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Keep coming. Keep coming. So I can see you. Just keep coming. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory be to God. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Now, those of you who have come forward, please talk to the Almighty God now. Tell Him, I'm not joking today. I've really come to surrender my life to you. Please have mercy on me. Save my soul. Let your blood wash away my sins. And I will serve you for the rest of my life. Those of you who are still on the way, come quickly. Come and join these people. And please, the rest of us, that we kindly stretch our hands to these people and intercede for them. And pray with all your heart that the one who saved our souls will save their own souls also. Please pray for them. Pray that the one who saved the soul of Dr. Ezekiel will save the souls of these people. Intercede for them. For just one more minute, pray with all your heart that these people who have genuine salvation today and they will end up in heaven. Thank you, Father. Glory be to God. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. My Father, my God, I want to bless your holy name. I want to thank you for your word. And I want to thank you especially for these people who have come to you today. You promise that anyone who will come to you, you will know why cast out. They've come to you now, Father. Please receive them. Save their souls. Let your blood wash away their sins. Lord, please write their names in the book of life. And I pray that on the last day in your kingdom, not a single one of them will be cast away. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. I want to rejoice with those of you who have come forward this day. It's a very special day for you, and I can assure you, your name is being written in the book of life now, and God himself will uphold you to the very end. The counselors will attend to you in a moment, but I want you to be here and join the rest of us as we pray this prayer. Please, every one of us here today, I want you to cry to the Almighty God, that the one who saved your soul, we also uphold you to the end. That you too will finish well, that you will finish strong. Please open your mouth and cry to the Almighty God. Lord, you have helped this general to make his home. Help me too, Lord. Let me also make it home. Let me end well. Let me end strong. Please, Lord, don't let me fall by the wayside. Cry unto the Almighty God. For just a minute or two, Pray to him now. God bless you.
Somebody shout hallelujah. Let's put our hands together one more time and appreciate our father. That's the word of a father. And very quickly, I have the pleasure to welcome to this meeting today the first lady of Lagos State standing in for the governor. We welcome Dr. Mrs. Sonwo Olu this afternoon. Please put your hands together. And welcome our excellency we welcome the honorable minister of state for mines and power dr uche oga please put your hands together and welcome him we also welcome one of our fathers bishop doctor and mrs simeon oka we welcome you sir in the name of jesus we have so many array of leaders of fathers ministers of the gospel all over here we know that will offend offend somebody if you have to mention all but please accept our precision that you are present. We want to move very quickly and have one of our, our fathers, a former president of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria, who is here today and will be taking the prayer for the family. This is very important to us. Please welcome our father, the Bishop Mike Okonko. Please put your hands together. He is the General Overseer of TREM. Please welcome Baba. Put your hands together. Keep clapping until he gets here. Please welcome him. We have just a few more things to be done. One more prayer. The documentary and this meeting will have been over. So let it be. Amen. That's why my song. Come on. members of the family so please could you stand where you are family members those and those of you who can come here come here but those on the podium could stand right where you are while we pray Wherever you are, could you please stretch your hands towards them as we pray for them. Father, we bless your name. We exalt you as we celebrate the life of your iconic man of God, the quintessential giant in faith. We give you the praise. Thank you for the lives he touched. Thank you for the legacy he has left behind and uh, the footprints he has left in the sands of time. We are grateful. We are grateful because the evidence abound of your mighty hand and grace upon his life in different nations of the world. Sons and daughters have been raised across the length and breadth of this earth because of your anointing upon his life. And now, Lord, we pray for this family. Thy hand is upon them for good. In the name of Jesus Christ, of Nazareth, the son of the living God, the dream of detractors the against them will never come true. Your design, your purpose, your predetermined plan for them before the foundation of the world, no power of darkness will abort it. 
your grace will work on their behalf. Father, I pray the comfort of the Holy Spirit much more than anyone can articulate for them at this time. Father, comfort them on every side. Increase their greatness. Your word declared that the seed of the righteous shall be mighty upon the earth. And so, while Lord, we proclaim and declare that they shall be mighty upon the earth. They shall fulfill their destiny. Their health will not fail them. Evil, evil shall bow before them. And the wicked will bow at their gates. I declare that their voices will not be silenced. In the name of Jesus Christ, you will take them from glory to glory. From grace to grace. From favor to favor. In the name of Jesus their lives will not be cut short. Father, only good news will come from their camps. We give you the praise. Lord, CPM will grow from grace to grace. From strength to strength. In the name of Jesus. Father, we give you the praise. We give you the honor. We give you all the adoration. In Jesus' much less name we have prayed. Everyone that's alive, shout a loud Amen. Celebrate God's general for that powerful prayers. Please keep celebrating our Father, Archbishop Dr. Mike Okonkwo of the Trem. I used to think that the CPM and I mean the CPM and the Trem are brothers and sisters until you give me a big clap for that general that prayed. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you for your patience, but keep waiting as we pull out to the next item. And like I always told people, I don't know if you remember what happened in 1622. How many of you remember what happened 1622? Who is an history student? Please ask your neighbor what happened 1622. Something happened 1622 in a country called Luke. In Luke 1622, the Bible said the poor man died and was carried, but the rich man died. And was buried. So there are two options like our father in the Lord that the G.O. preach. When you die, either you are carried or you are buried. When you are carried by angels, of course, to the bosom of the Lord. But when you are buried, we have no idea where you are going to. So tell your neighbor, that's what happened 1622. Ladies and gentlemen, we're about to call up to pray for the CPFN as a church. Are you ready for that fatherly blessing? I'm bringing up the Chancellor of Precious Cornerstones University. I'm bringing up the founder of the Sword of the Spirit Ministry, Badon. I'm bringing up the General in Charge, National President, of the Pentecostal Fellowship of Nigeria. Will you make some noise yes, as we bring no up more. Bishop Dr. Wala? Okay, come on.
thank you for the life of your choice servant, Dr. Obiora Ezekiel. Thank you, O God, for the salvation of his soul purchased with the precious blood of Jesus. Thank you for your call upon his life and the anointing of the Holy Spirit and how you used him to impact millions of people. Thank you for his ministry. Thank you for Christian Pentecostal mission and the great multitude of membership across Nigeria, East, West, North, and South, and across the world. Lord, receive the glory in the name of Jesus. Thank you for blessing the ministry of your servant. Lord, we pray particularly for CPM at this time. When Jesus died at the right time, according to the will of the Father, his ministry did not die. So we pray, CPM will never die. In the name of Jesus. CPM will never diminish. In the name of Jesus. After the death of Jesus, his ministry entered a higher realm of glory and explosion and became global in impact, in membership. We ask, O oh God, that you will take CPM to a higher level of glory in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that CPM will explode by the power of the Holy Spirit and will engulf the whole world in the mighty name of Jesus. The CPM will become a mighty force for global mission in the mighty name of Jesus. We pray, O oh God, that you will bless every leader, every pastor, every worker, every member of CPM. The Bible says after the death of Abraham, God blessed Isaac. Lord, bless them more than ever before in Jesus' name. We pray for your handmaiden upon whom the mantle has fallen to lead his work. We pray you will strengthen her with might in the inner man. You will clothe her with your wisdom. You will clothe her with the sevenfold spirit of the Lord. And you will lead her step by step by step that she will make this work far greater and mightier than ever before through the help of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. We declare CPM will go from glory to glory. CPM will rise higher and higher. CPM will work stronger and stronger in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we remind you of your word, the cone of wheat has fallen to the ground and died. Lord, your servant has been called home. We pray that this corn will bring forth many, 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 many fruit like it in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. We give you glory. We give you honor because you have answered us in Jesus' name mighty name we pray let every living soul say aloud amen. amen 